He restores my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Praise God. Father, once again we need you to open up the word to us and to open us up to the scripture. Lord God, would you do a work in each one of us tonight, please? Please, Father. Help where help is required. Bring comfort and strength where that is needed. And just encourage us in our God, in our shepherd. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so this is our third message in the, the psalm. We've previously noted that uh, this great condescension of the Lord to come down to be the shepherd of his people, to uh, the one who is above all things, who's greater than everything, the one who is everything that we are not, The holy perfections of God shine brighter than the, the sun, yet he chose to be our shepherd and all that that entails. Stooping down to deal with us, to deal with you and me, to provide for us, to protect us, to guide us. And that in Jesus, our good shepherd, that the Lord, as we saw last week, makes us to, at times, makes us to lie down in green pastures, to cause us to be in lush pasture, resting and nourishing us. Tonight, we're going to look at something else that uh, the shepherd does for the, the sheep. Tonight, we're going to look at the fact that the shepherd restores the soul's of the soul weary sheep. The shepherd restores the souls. That's marvelous because there's not one of us who would claim surely that we've never been in that position. He restoreth my soul, says King David. He restoreth my soul is a powerful confession from this man. This is a recognition from David that there have been seasons when his soul needed to be restored, needed to be brought back. There was a time, there were times for David when his soul was weary. Now remember who we're speaking about here. Remember who this is. Israel's greatest earthly king. A man after God's own heart. And he finds himself at times weary deep in his heart. This man of war. David didn't just slay his thousands, the song goes. He slayed his ten thousands. Yet here he is, victorious over his enemies, confronting, as a young man, confronting Goliath and winning that fight with a sling and a stone. And here he is, confessing that even although that is true, there are times when my soul is weary. That's his personal testimony of God. And I find that encouraging, and we should find that encouraging, because I think sometimes when we find ourselves in situations where we are going through a season of soul weariness, the temptation is to think we are going through that on our own. No one has ever experienced this before. 
This is greater than anything anyone has ever experienced. And I find it a real encouragement when we read this psalm and we find that King David himself knows what we're going through. And if King David was inspired to write this by the Holy Spirit, we are rejoicing tonight that God, therefore, knows what it's like for us to be weary in our soul. That's our shepherd. So David's personal testimony is that when times were heavy upon him, the Lord restored his soul. And maybe that testimony does resonate with you. Maybe you are going through something tonight or know someone who is. Maybe you have, you're going through some kind of pressure deep inside you that is just causing you a lot of hassle, causing you a lot of struggle at this moment, pain even. Well, don't think that you're the only one that's ever felt that. And don't think that you're going through what you're going through at this moment on your own. That's not the case. Isn't it marvelous that David knew this, but in the midst of it, he knew the fellowship of God. He knew the fellowship of his Savior. He knew the fellowship of the shepherd. The shepherd restores my soul. The shepherd has to be there then. That's a wonder for us in the midst of what we go through, that God is there. And you see, the, there's a blessing in this where David says, um, he restoreth my soul. There's a blessedness in this because what we're being told there is that the, that the weary soul is the only soul that is going to be restored. He restores my soul. The soul that needs to be restored is the soul that is restored. Oh, let me be clearer if you're not getting that. If you're struggling tonight, let me tell you that your struggle, your soul is in the heart and mind of God, and he intends to bring you through what you are in, and he will restore your soul. Isn't that marvelous? He restores my soul, says David. He restores my soul, says the pastor. He restores your soul. That's the testimony that we all have of our shepherd. And it's a testimony that will go on forever. David doesn't say, he restored my soul. He restores my soul. Every time I feel myself going down, says David, the shepherd picks me up. Every time I feel myself encircled with depression, every time I feel myself being driven down by the black cloud that's over me, he will restore me. He restoreth my soul. That's a blessing for us tonight. In 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 16, and Jonathan I love this because, because of the way Jonathan interacts with David. And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. Folks, that is how the shepherd restores your soul. He knows your soul needs to be restored, and he restores your soul by sending a brother or by sending a sister to strengthen you in the Lord. You all have had a phone call at just the right time. You've had a card at just the right time. You've had a knock at the door and a visit 
at just the right time, or you've made those calls. Do you know what that is? That's the shepherd restoring your soul at a time when you need to be restored. He restoreth my soul, says David. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for the Jonathans in our lives who can discern when we're going through what we're going through and can draw close to us at that moment and strengthen our hand in God. We are the sheep of God's pasture. All of us together are the flock. But each of us individually are unique and equally loved by the shepherd. Each of us. And when your soul is jaded, when your soul is hurting, when your soul is in turmoil, it might be because of whatever reason, people, circumstances, when your soul is jaded, the shepherd restores it every single time. So you might be sitting tonight in the midst of something and you're saying, oh, very good, Pastor. How am I to accept that God will restore my soul in this situation? Because he's restored your soul in previous situations. And this is present tense. The Lord restoreth my soul. We should be happy tonight that the Lord does not simply save souls. He restores souls. We should be thrilled tonight that when a soul is sorrowing, he revives it. When a soul is sinful, he sanctifies it. When a soul is confused, he makes things clear. When a soul is weak, he strengthens it. He enables us to stand and come through because he breathes strength into us. He speaks strength into us. You hear a sermon and you think, my goodness, that was for me. Who told him about me? been there, haven't we? Or you, you, you receive a word, a, a scripture, and you think that is just on the button for me right now. God speaks restoration into the souls of his people, into the souls of his loved ones. No pastor can do that. No elder can do that. No deacon can do that unless Almighty God is using that ministry to do that. And that thrills me, and I'm sure it thrills the leaders in the church as well, that the responsibility isn't ours. The responsibility is His, and He uses us to fulfill His responsibility, which He will never fail in. Hallelujah. He restores my soul. Are you a soul-drained sheep tonight? Well, isn't it marvelous that Jesus Christ looks on you and he looks beyond what we can see? You know that phony smile that you put on your face because you want people to think that everything's okay, while, and that's what we all do, and while deep in your heart you are in real trouble. 
That's what the Savior sees. That's what Jesus sees, and his desire is to restore your soul, to make you healthy, to give you strength, to give you peace, to give you joy, to give you direction. That's the shepherd. David says, he restores my soul. Jesus does this for his people. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, this is to me, Jesus really being clear with Paul as to the way things are and the way things have always been and the way things always be. 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 9, he says, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, says Paul, will I rather glorify in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. But my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Isn't that a, a, a beautiful word from Jesus? When we're in the midst of something, when our soul is hurting, when our soul is in pain, isn't it great to hear Jesus saying, not only that my grace is sufficient for thee, but to hear Jesus saying, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Not your strength will be made perfect in weakness, our strength will never be made perfect. His strength is made perfect in weakness. And so when the soul is weary, Jesus comes to that wearied soul and he says, let me be your strength. I am your strength. It's in your weakness that you will experience the greatness and the strength of Jesus Christ. He restoreth my soul, says King David. He restoreth my soul. I, I, just, I, I just pray that if you're struggling with something in, in that way that where there's a, a, a spiritual ebbing of the tide, that you will, you will be able to turn to the one who can cause a spiritual flood to enter your soul. I will restore your soul. David says, he restoreth my soul. He brings restoration to me. But David also speaks of the way in which that restoration comes. He says in verse 3, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness. There is refreshing, there is restoration when the shepherd leads us back onto the paths of righteousness. When the shepherd gets us out of the area in which we've stumbled or the area in which we've come to a halt, we've fallen off that road that we should be on, when he bits, puts us back on the paths of righteousness, our souls are restored and refreshed. There is refreshing in righteousness. There is restoration there. Paths of worldliness, where, where righteousness is absent. Um, just wear the sheep out. Have you noticed that? The world offers us promises to refresh us, to energize us, to give us what we need and what we want. You see it all over, you hear it all around, And everything, every single time one of the people of God seeks to go that way and find their restoration or their, their energizing, their, their, their sense of energy and joy and, and, and purpose in any of these other paths, any time we go down that path, it wears us out because we are left 
in a worse condition than we were before we started. The world cannot refresh your soul because the world knows nothing of righteousness. The world cannot restore you. The world just cannot do it because the world's plan is to drain you of everything because the world lies under the sway of the evil one. And he doesn't want to restore the wearied soul of the Lord's sheep. It's only by turning to him, turning to the shepherd, and being led back into the righteous paths that we find our souls being restored. It's the way of holiness, the way of perfection. I know, I know you can't keep that up. None of us can. But the shepherd leads us in that pathway. The shepherd leads us keeping an eye on us. And so that when we stumble and when we get it wrong and we find our soul is being bombarded once again, he picks us up and he puts us back where we should be and on we go. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe that your shepherd has an intention to refresh you and to restore your soul? Do you believe with all your heart that's what Christ wants for you? Of course you do. Because you love him who first loved you and loves you so much. And so uh, David says he restores my soul and he almost says by leading me in paths of righteousness. Look at Isaiah chapter 35 and verse 8. And a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads, and they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Where will sorrow and sighing flee away? When we are walking once again on the way of holiness, when we are walking once again on the righteous paths that God is leading us on by his shepherd. That's where we will be restored. And what happens to a weary soul that has been restored? It joins the number who are going with singing unto Zion with everlasting joy on their heads. He restoreth my soul, says David. What confidence he has in Almighty God. And we need to see also as we noticed last week with the still waters. Uh, we can't find the still waters ourselves. We need to be led to the still waters. You will never find the way of righteousness. You've got to be led there by Jesus Christ. And so uh, sheep, the flock of his pasture, when your soul is a burden to you, you know, when you feel that burn in, your, in yourself and, and it's, you can't even explain it perhaps, why you're feeling like that. Maybe you can, but maybe you can't. He restores forever and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. Never doing the wrong thing, always leading us to a place where we once again can join in that chorus, singing and praising his holy name. 
I'm going to ask you a personal question, and you can answer it in your heart. I just... Are you bruised tonight in your soul? He restoreth my soul. He heals you. He binds you up. He binds up the brokenhearted. He makes sure that his sheep will never be left in a condition that is less than being touched by the power of God to bring them to restoration. He will never allow his flock to go wandering to destruction. He will never allow anything to come into your soul, your soul's experience or my soul's experience. He will never allow anything that's going to destroy that because he intends to be as faithful to us as he was to David and he will restore. Oh, can you just feel the, the hope of that? If you can't feel the joy of that right now, do you, are you able to feel the hope of a soul-restoring shepherd? who leads you into that restoration, who beckons you to come into restoration. But there's something that we need to see in Psalm number five, the fifth Psalm. When we think of the shepherd leading the bruised soul into restoration and wholeness on the paths of righteousness. The reason that Jesus has to lead us to those paths is because of what we read in the fifth Psalm in verse 8. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. The way, make the way straight before my face. You see, lead me, O Lord, not simply in the paths of righteousness. Lead me in your righteousness. The righteousness that brings restoration to our soul is the righteousness of Christ. He wants us to come into that pathway, walk on that pathway, and be clothed with that righteousness, his righteousness, which restores our soul. When, have you ever been in that position where you've wandered off and, you, and you've, you've gone in the wrong direction or you've just taken a sidestep, not even gone in the wrong direction, you've just taken a sidestep or someone's bumped you off the path and you've, you suddenly find yourself not quite where you were. And Jesus wants to draw us back into his righteousness. Because you know, like I know, that when we come back onto that righteous way and we begin to walk again, we feel as if our soul has been refreshed. We feel the renewed strength flooding in again. We feel God has done something in us. I remember a few years ago that experience of, it was like almost having a personal revival because I remember the moment when I was pleading with God because I didn't understand, this was a, a wee while ago, this was while I was still elsewhere. And I didn't understand why things were the way they were when I wanted them to be some other way. And God showed me all of this that's around you. That is not what matters. And you will not find your strength in these places. You will not find your strength in these people. You will not find your strength elsewhere. You have to find your strength and righteousness and restoration and joy in me. Look to me. Brother or sister, if you are a bruised soul tonight, 
You need to look to Jesus Christ, the shepherd, who promises through David, he restoreth my soul with his righteousness, imputed righteousness, righteousness given, not earned. That's wonderful for a bruised soul to hear that the righteousness that refreshes them and restores them is righteousness that is bestowed upon them. Hurting sheep tonight, wherever you might be, the righteousness that will give you wholeness, hope, and strength again, the righteousness that will give you joy again, the righteousness that will restore you to where you should be is a righteousness that will be bestowed upon you. It's a righteousness that has been bestowed upon you. And oh, may the Lord open your eyes to see the robes that you are wearing right now tonight. Right now in the midst of what you're going through, right now when you feel rubbish, just may the Lord open your eyes to see the robes of righteousness all about you. May your mind and your heart be opened at this very moment to realize that not even Solomon in all of his, spl his splendor was clothed like you. He restoreth my soul. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. And the reason he can restore our souls by bestowing his righteousness on us is because of that reverse imputation, if you like, that reverse bestowing. Our sin was put on him. That thing that causes us pain when we think about it, that thing that causes us shame when we think about it, our imperfections, our weaknesses, our infirmities, our afflictions, our hurts, our pains, our confusions, all laid upon him at Calvary so that he can bestow upon us the righteousness that refreshes us. Blessed is the man to whom, to whom the Lord does not impute sin or iniquity. That's us, you see. No matter how hopeless you feel, you're a blessed individual because you'll never stand before God. As a believer, you will never stand before God and be condemned for the sin that you've committed. Why? Because you have been given his righteousness in exchange for that sin that was laid upon him. He restoreth my soul. God speaks into your heart. He speaks life into your heart. And that's marvelous. And we thank God that David is speaking the truth when he says, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. But look at the last bit. For his name's sake. Because you see, you don't deserve it. He does it for the glory of God. This is one of the things that thrills me, uh, that Jesus Christ does all of this because he loves me, because he loves us as his sheep. He, he loves us as his people, absolutely loves us uh, all the way to Calvary and beyond. He loves us. And he does these things, he restores our soul because he loves us. But ultimately, because he loves the glory of God. Jesus Christ died at Calvary for your sin and for mine, ultimately for the sake of the name of God. That's marvelous. Do you know why? Because if Jesus, it's marvelous that he loves us enough, but it's marvelous to think that Jesus Christ does what he does for the glory of God because the glory of God is so crucially important to the Savior. The shepherd's heart is for the glory of God. That means your restoration, 
He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. That restoration is guaranteed. Why? Because it is locked in with the glory of God. The glory of the name of God is at stake when Jesus shepherds his people. Isn't that amazing? That your life and my life, this church, is locked into that. And because that we are locked into to Jesus Christ shepherding for the glory of God, we can be supremely confident and assured, certain, that whatever we need at whatever time we need it, whatever we need when we are going through the darkness, when we are going through that time where the cloud is on us, whatever we need is a guaranteed certainty because Jesus will do it to glorify the Father. My, well, I'll just say it. Hallelujah. Where are you tonight? In your walk with the Lord. Where are you tonight with regards to your relationship as a sheep to the shepherd? Maybe you are aching. Maybe you're sad. Maybe you're just confused. Well, because of the glory of the Father, you can be guaranteed that the shepherd will restore you. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me on paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Praise the Lord for our beautiful and glorious shepherd. Father, we love you so much. We just praise your holy name tonight. Here we are, Lord, needing a shepherd who can draw close to us and lay his hand upon us at just the right moment. Hearts are broken. Minds are confused. Lives are chaotic. Oh, but what a joy to know that your intention is restoration. Restore our souls, lead us on righteous paths, and may your name be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen.